This week I'm going to take a look at some forgotten gems of battle styles, some cards that I haven't featured yet, and today we're starting with Tyranitar V. Welcome back everyone to more from the Sable Eyes. I'm Mitch, and with Chilling Rain around the corner, I figured it would be time to go back and pick up some of the cards that I haven't looked at from Battle Styles yet, starting today with Tyranitar V. Tyranitar V is a really cool card, a dark type single strike Pokemon with 230 HP, which has two really cool attacks. The first one, Cragalanch, for a dark and double colorless, deals 60 damage, which is pretty solid, and discards two cards from the top of your opponent's deck. This means that you can essentially mill them whilst putting a bit of pressure on, get some extra damage thanks to single strike energy, we're dealing about 100 damage every time we attack with this one. We also have, as a second attack for two dark and two colourless, single strike crush, which is our one shot option in this deck, it deals 240 damage, and then we discard the top four cards of our deck. Which is, which is not ideal, but acceptable considering the fact that when we add a couple of single strike energy to the damage, we can do 280, which will knock out every tag team and get us pretty close to most VMAXs. We obviously power up our Tyranitar using Houndoom, a classic support Pokemon now, and it will be really good going forward, so pick up your copies if you haven't already. We've got Single Strike Raw, which means we can search our deck for a Single Strike Energy and attach it to one of our Single Strike Pokemon, and we deal 20 damage to that Pokemon. Really, really good. However, Tyranitar isn't always going to do the job for us. Sometimes there are going to be matchups where we will need another attacker, and we've got one copy of Stonejourner in the list, because I think that, honestly, it's a really, really strong single prize attacker. With its first attack, Lands Pulse, we can deal 30 plus 30 more damage if there is a stadium in play. Most of the time there will be, and with those extra single strike energy, we can be dealing 100 damage, which is enough to put a bit of pressure on lots of Pokemon. We've also got Giga Hammer for two fighting and a colorless, 120, we can get that up to 160, even 180 if we are lucky. A really solid one prize attacker to back up our Tyranitars. If you like the list, it's up on the screen, you can copy it in from there, or you can copy it from the description down below, import that into PTCGO and play along with me. And whilst you're down there, if you could like this video, that would be fantastic. The more likes I get, the more times I, I give myself a pat on the back, I appreciate it. Yes, I've had a haircut. Starting up with a Krikatoon is a pretty strong effort, frankly. I like that. This hand, though, is pretty average. I have a good deck. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, just double-check that my audio is recording, because I've not done this for a while. Let's get started. Air Balloon to the active. We'll play down the Mew. We're up against Picarom, I think. We'll attach the capture to the Mew and get ourselves a Houndour. Uh, that seems fine, and then we can pass. Unfortunately, being un unable to play our hand down there is a bit of a problem. Just gonna do a little bit of a maneuvering of macrophones, etc. We'll just slide all this stuff in the correct direction. There we go. Oh, now you can see the little red light in the corner. There it is. Now my no my now my audio is better. Anyway. Uh, yeah, would have been good if I had got down to uh, down to four cards, uh, down to less than four cards, because I would have been able to uh, draw some extras, which would have been nice. But it's okay. We've got strong uh, single strike energy in our hand. We can shuffle them back in with the money so that they are searchable with the Houndoom if we manage to get it out. And since we're playing up against Pikachu and Zekrom, we are likely to be able to get some value out of our Stonejourner. So any attachments onto Stonejourner during this game are going to be at an absolute premium. I don't like the... Uh, I'm just going to move the light slightly off, off the camera. It's ever so slight. You'll never you'll never know the difference. Also, am I the right size? I don't even know if I'm... I feel like I'm a bit small. Ooh, I'll make myself a little bit bigger. There we go. Because it's about me. This content's about me. I'm the one you're here to watch. Not this, but me! Good grief, Charlie Brown. Alrighty! Um, not a great card to top deck there. We can just Marnie away. Uh, hopefully, we can get some stuff going. And it looks like we might be able to. Uh, we have a Great Ball, a Houndoom, a Crobat. We've got a lot of stuff to work with here. Um, ugh, second Houndoom's not ideal. I'll grab it, I think. Oh, actually, let's get the... De oh, my God. Oh, let's get the Houndoom. This is not good. Um, it's not ideal. But, I mean, we can do a couple of things here. We can trade that uh, Houndoom away later with the tower. 
We'll also use Crobant. Good grief, Charlie Brown. Is there any chance of me getting a Pokemon to attack with? Thank you. Okay, so now we can at least start powering something up. I'm going to attach a Capture Energy and get another Houndour here. We'll then Single Strike Raw and Energy onto the uh, Tyranitar. And we will be able to get a Knockout on a Picarom next turn. Um... If we are able to get a second Town Doom in play, we could potentially even get an attachment to another attacker. But I don't like the fact that I've left my opponent uh, free to do whatever they like. I would have much preferred to have gotten a Stonjourner there and uh, attached a single strike, attached one with the Hound Doom, and then knocked out the Bolton. That would have been fantastic, but sometimes it just doesn't go that way, you know. Sometimes you just don't get what you want. I'm just looking at this hand. It's a shocker. Uh, but that's okay. We've got plenty to work with. Do you guys prefer when I look this way on the camera? Or do you prefer when I look this way, like when I'm playing? Because this is me looking at the screen, right, where my cards actually are. And this is me playing via OBS. <laughs> I'm looking through OBS. If I do it this way, it looks like I'm looking at the cards. They're over there. But if I do it this way, I can do it properly. So, you know, comment below. Let me know. Whatever you want to do. What is our opponent? Oh, hello, Bucket. How are you doing? You're slightly off camera, but just annoying enough. That is just annoying enough. That fan of waves, very frustrating. Uh, means now we are going to need both Houndooms. So if we lose this hand, um, we are going to need to find the Houndoom again. I'm just concerned, actually. What do we, what do we go? I'm just concerned that we don't have any way to draw cards, because I don't think that our opponent is going to be taking a knockout this turn. They're taking a very long time, regardless. Whatever it is that they're doing, they're working towards it very methodically. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, they could potentially electrify again. My gut feeling is that they don't want to use Picaron, because I could just knock it out. In saying that, though, they will go for the Picaron. Maybe they have a switch to go back into the uh, into the Bolton so that they can hit into the Krikatoon. Maybe. They potentially take a knockout there. 3, 6, 9, 12, 8. I think they do take a knockout with the Bolton if they do have a switch. Oh, wait. No, just a full blitz. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Just a full blitz bucket. Okay, so, they're going to accelerate a bunch of energies, and they're all going to the Zera Aura on the bench, which is a card that I've not seen in Picarom for a while. Uh, we do keep our hand, though, which is great. We can throw down the Single Strike energy, and then Single Strike Roar twice, because all of our energies are in the deck. We can get those into the field of play, and we will be able to take a knockout on this Picarom. It will come at the expense of a few of our cards. We're going to have to Single Strike Crush here, take three prizes, and we'll discard four cards. We lost a Research and a Marnie, both frustrating cards to lose, but we took three prizes, and we managed to find Stonjourner as well, which, as I mentioned, is a very important attacking option in this deck, so I think that is a big win. Alrighty, so what does this do? 50 times damage from every card. Okay, they've got four energy, so they're going to take a knockout. Yeah. You'll be proud of me, I read the card. I read the card. Um, so this Tyranitar is going down next turn. We need to find one more single strike energy in the deck to attack with Stonjourner. That'll take a knockout on the Zero Aura. And then I don't think there's going to be too much more that our opponent can do. Like, realistically, looking at this hand, we have an attacker which can take a knockout. As long as we have one energy in deck, which I believe we do, we will be ready to win this game, I think, against Pikachu and Zekrom. Uh, thanks to that one prize Stonjourner, which is very, very cool. And the one prize single strike Pokemon are looking great as well. Chilling Rain single strike Pokemon look very impressive. I know a couple people who are very excited about it, so I am excited to see how it goes. That's a pretty good Crobat for six. This looks like an interesting Pikachu kind of Picarom deck. And it looks like there's a, a Raichu potential there as well. I don't know. This is very interesting. Anyway, we'll wait and see. We will wait and see. Hmm. Yeah, I know, Bucket. I think it's around It's around tea time. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's, it's almost 2 o'clock when I'm recording this. So, poor little kitty. She's a little bit hungry. She's a little bit hungry for lunch. So, I'll have to go and do that in between games. We'll see how we go. Also, if you hear... I, I can't remember whether I mentioned this in the, in the intro or not. But if you hear random beeps at any point... 
That's my internet saying that my battery is low, because apparently my internet box is powered by a battery that needs to be replaced. Which is preposterous, frankly, but, you know, I don't make the rules. Whatever. Uh, big research, took a very long time to get to that decision. And then a discharge, cool. So we just kind of sat around and waited for nothing there, but that's fine. We're going to take a knockout on the Zero Aura. We could potentially get a knockout on a Bolton if we find a boss or something off of the top deck. That would be very nice. Um, we'll promote the Cricket Tomb as well, and then it is time to go. No boss. Uh, but we do have the option to do some thinning, which is always good. I think it's going to... Um, uh, I don't know if we want to. Let's quick ball away a Capture Energy. We don't really need any more of those. Um, we can just grab a Houndour out. We've got two bosses and one single strike energy left, so the Stonjourner is good to go. Uh, the problem that we had early is that we had to attach energy to the Mew, uh, which we didn't really need in play to get ourselves started. It's kind of awkward. Let's use Escape Rope here. Uh, the Zero Aura is not useful to them anymore. Anything that they promote we can knock out, and that is good for us. So, they either promote their one prize Pikachu, which means I never find out what the uh, Raichu is, or they give me two prizes for free. So, we'll wait and see. They're going to go for the Pikachu. Fair enough. That makes a lot of sense. Um, i probably go into the Stun Journa and take the Knockout, I would think. It's probably as simple as that. 120 damage. 160 damage because of the uh, single strike energy as well. And top decking a boss's orders. Very nice. The only thing I need to do now is find an urn, and I should be able to win this game, I think. Cragalanch won't take a knockout, I don't think. 60, 80, 100? No, I'm going to need this Stonjourner. Crushing Claw can discard a special energy. And the head's on a... Oh my goodness, okay, well I wasn't expecting this. Um, I wasn't expecting that. So they've just removed both of my energy. Um, not cool, bro! I think we just pass. There's not a lot more to do. We could have, like, bossed up a, uh, a, Pika a Pikachu. No, not a Pikachu. What do I want? It's a, oh my god, it's a Dene. My brain is not working this morning. I I'm so very tired. Um, the, we could have gusted up the Dene and forced a, a subpar attachment, but it doesn't really matter if they want to retreat into the Bolton to knock out the stun journal, they can do it anyway. But yeah, this is awkward. And they don't have anything to do either. Okay, so we're having a very, very slow one here. Now we're not. Okay, now we win. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say, we're having a very, very slow one here. Um, but I happen to top deck into the uh, the urn of vitality. If I can accelerate these two energies without knocking myself out, which I can, we get ourselves to 60 damage, plus 40, we can gust up the Dedene. And use Land's Pulse for victory. Well, there we go. That's a very interesting Picarom deck. I've never seen one like that before. Alrighty, go time. We've got ourselves a Tyranistar... A, a Tyranistar. Goodness gracious me. A Tyranitar start. Let's attach a single strike energy. We've got Quick Balls as well. Um, I probably should have attached a Capture energy, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Dang. Oh, well. Um, a Houndour. <laughs> goodness. Uh, then we'll quick ball and uh, we'll get rid of the air balloon. We'll grab another Houndour. That seems fine. And then we can probably pass. And we're going to be playing against uh, Zigzagoon, Dark Deck Box, Eternatus? Question point? Eternatus, maybe? Maybe. Could it possibly be? Great ball. All signs point to Eternatus. Another Zigzagoon? Mm, we're being kept in suspense, but it's definitely Eternatus. Which means, again... Oh, there's that beep! I told you there'd be a beep. My internet's slowly suffocating on its own uh, on its own life force. I don't know what it's doing up there. Anyway, um, I need to get a person in to fix that. Marnie is fine. I'm happy with the Marnie. These are all good cards. I don't know why, why you Marnie'd there. Obviously, you need to draw some cards. And the Eternatus finally comes into play. We can see that it is obviously an alternative deck. They've got an attachment and they've got a poker comp, so they're going to be able to crowbat for at least five cards. Throwing the E-turn VMAX back into the deck to grab that crowbat, and then they will draw five. Or they'll play down another Zigzagoon in their hand or something. No, just five. Okay, fair enough. And then a pass. Fair enough. Okay, well, in that case, uh, what we need to do is we need to get ourselves a at least one Houndoom. So we'll do that. Uh, then... 
I mean, we're gonna Marnie here. Let's use the Great Ball. We'll grab the Mew. That's not a particularly useful card here, so we can Quick Ball away the Mew and grab something like Stonjourner, potentially, because that's going to be a handy Pokemon to have. Uh, then we'll, uh, yeah, then we'll Single Strike Roar. Um, this is an interesting one, because what I could have done is I could have Marnied first um, and given myself a better chance of drawing into energy, but I drew into energy anyway, because I'm a, a lucky boy. Uh, so we will play down the Houndoom, we'll play down the Tyranitar, attach the energy, and then Kragalanch, Take the knockout on the Zigzagoon, thanks to the single strike energies, and discard two cards from our opponent's deck. Pretty good stuff, and we find an energy off of the top, which means that next turn, Stonjourner can start dealing some damage, especially if our opponent uses a Stadium. I will also state, for the record, that now that I have benched myself out, I am concerned that I shouldn't have benched myself out. I do not have... I do not have the resources to have a bench like this. So I probably shouldn't have played down the second Tyranitar or the third Houndour, especially considering the fact that Stonjourner was already in play. Either that or when I went and grabbed the Stonjourner, I should have grabbed Krikatoon, because then I would have been able to at least draw some cards. But Marnie is going to get me out of it. Yet again, we are being fixed up by our opponent. Appreciate that one, my good friend. And we've been given effectively all that we need to create some real havoc for this Eternatus. Because um, we've got two Houndooms, we've got a Stonjourner, and we've got a Marnie. So next turn, we should be able to Lands Pulse here for a pretty solid amount of damage. Frankly, I think it's going to be about 200. Uh, depending, of course, on what else we manage to find, we may be able to get closer to... Oh my goodness, they, I was just assuming that they were going to knock me out. Oh boy, okay. Um, well, in that case... Uh, 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 let's attach, uh, evolve, sorry, we'll evolve. Uh, then I will use single strike raw, we'll grab one of the energies, and we're going to put that on the Stonjourner. Now, I don't think that we need to actually power up the active. We can, but I don't think we need to. So I'm just going to preemptively attach energies to the Stonjourner there. I'm going to play down the Tower of Darkness. Um, I don't really need to Marnie... But I like the idea of escape rope. We could get ourselves some prizes, or we could just attack into this Eternatus, half hit it, and then let the Stonjourner do the rest of the work next turn. So I think that's probably what we'll do. We'll just deal 100 damage. Now we are within range of taking a knockout with our one prize Stonjourner, which is good. Uh, and ultimately, this trade is going to work out quite well for us, because they will take two prizes, but we'll then take three, uh, which is always good, right? So we're always going to be in a position where we can go on uh, to win this game. Now, they've zigzagooned onto the active. I don't think that that's the right play. Um, but obviously, at this point, it probably doesn't really matter where they put their damage counters. What does matter, however, is where we're going to get our next attacker from. Where's the tool jammers? Because uh, we can, like, like I said, we can get ourselves a knockout with the Stonjourner, but we are going to need to take a knockout on one of the Crobats on the bench to win the game. So let's just have a think. Uh, we're probably Marnieing now. Urn of Vitality is such a good card to get off of the top deck there. Unbelievable. That's the second time that's happened. Uh, then we can Marnie. Uh, could have gone for the Houndoom early there, but decided against it for no reason other than I wanted an attachment if I could have got one, because um, then I could have prepped myself a little bit better. Uh, we can Great Ball for our Tyranitar, but we don't really need to play that down. We can discard it for a couple of cards. Research is good, but it's not what we wanted. We are looking for a boss's orders for next turn. Um, and we also will need some extra single strike energies uh, at some point. Obviously, all four of them are going to be in play here. Can we, we can take a knockout, can't we? No, I think we actually need to... I think we need to attach to the active to Giga Hammer. I think that's what we need to do. Um, I was kind of thinking, well, we can just, you know, we can just Lands Pulse, but we actually can't do that. Um, but a good thing here is we can Quick Ball away a Research... And then use Krikatoon to draw a card, which I like. That's exciting, get it? Exciting? Ha 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 ha. Exciting stage. Oh, what a funny, what a funny joke. Um, alrighty. Giga Hammer, we'll take the knockout. And now... We are in an interesting spot. 
the Dene and Crobat off of the prizes are both good options. We've got an Air Balloon which we can attach to Cricketoon. We've got a Dene that we can play. We've got a Crobat that we can play. We've got Marnie and Research. We have everything that we need to find a new hand, but we do need to find Boss and Earn this turn if we want to win the game. To be honest though, we don't even need to win the game this turn. Uh, the issue will be, do we have enough attackers? And I think I actually discarded the Tyranitar that I would have needed to take the win here. So, it will be a little bit interesting. But, we've given ourselves as good a chance as any. Capture energy is good, because we can attach that. Um, we'll grab Fion, because they might be silly. We've got three urns left in deck. Plus plenty of bosses. So that is good. I will research here, I think. Um, we've got the urn. But we can't retreat because of the tool blocker. So let's draw some more cards with Tower of Darkness. And for some reason, our opponent has conceded. So there you go. I mean, we would have won there because we found the extra escape rope. So... There we have it. A couple of games, a couple of decent games, had some good matchups, but you know, we can we can take what we take from it. How good is this deck? Well, overall, I think playability-wise, I'm giving this one a C. It can definitely play, right? You can use it, but you know, it's 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 one of those decks where there is an obvious better first attacker, right? So like Tyranitar is good, but obviously if we want to play a single strike deck, there is a better option out there. Single strike Urshifu is a better attacker, so that means that Tyranitar is always inherently going to be slightly worse. Consistency-wise, though, it is just as strong. You can constantly get what you need out. Uh, the problems are always when you start to run out of energy, so you have to rely on those urns. But otherwise, it's pretty good. Value-wise, it's pretty cheap to get your hands on. Tyranitar is not too difficult to find. Uh, neither are Houndoom. And plus, once you've got your Houndooms, you can play a bunch of different decks, including a number over the next couple of sets. So definitely worth it. For me though, fun-wise, I don't really enjoy this deck. I don't know what it was. I feel like all the numbers are kind of a little bit awkward. I'm not sure. There's just something about it that wasn't quite, it didn't feel quite as good as some other single strike decks that I've played. Overall, I'm going to give this one a C plus Playability bringing it down a little bit, but you know, if you want to play single strike, you can just play single strike Urshifu, right? So thank you very much, everyone, for coming along. If you've enjoyed it, then please leave a like if you haven't already. Uh, if you do enjoy it so much that you'd like to support the channel monetarily, then chuck in a buck if you want down below. Join the channel, become a member. It's less than a cup of coffee. Thank you very much to all of these lovely people over here, especially Dadbod, Azazel, Fernando, Yolo, Stephen, Ty, Edge, Enable, Austin, Josiah, Lift, Vow, Robsy, Caster, Brad, Shings, Brad, Justin, Croc, Otaku Gaming. Thank you very much to you guys, as well as all of my Mega Sableye members in white over here. Um, I haven't updated this list in a while. I should probably do it again because I don't know whether anyone's joined up again. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And I'll catch you next time for more from the Sableyes. Bye.